Hello everyone, and in this video, we are going to be walking through an example problem that will require the use of steam tables to solve, and we're also going to be making use of the energy balance too. And so the problem statement is here, we've got some feed going into a chemical process that we need to preheat, and we know the specific heat capacity of this particular feed, and we know the temperature that we need to increase it to, and we know its mass flow rate, and so the question is, how much energy do I have to supply to this thing at a steady state? And then the follow-up to that is if we're using superheated steam to supply this energy and we know the temperature and pressure of our inlet and outlet of that superheated steam, we have to figure out what mass flow rate of superheated steam is going to, need it, going to be needed to, to do this process. The very first thing I like to do is just draw out what's happening here. And so uh, jacketed CSTR is this thing that I think is pretty cool. So basically you just have a normal CSTR um, as you would that has some kind of inlet. So I'll call it like FI and then an outlet I'll call fo and so inside of here you've got you know your solution whatever it is it's going into one of your chemical reactors downstream and you need to increase its temperature somehow and so people have these things called jacketed cstrs where they literally will just take a bunch of heat coils and they kind of wrap it around this thing a bunch of times and so um, this is how you're supplying your q or your energy so that q dot um, and so that's what's either adding energy into a system or taking energy away um, you can also use this for a chemical process itself, um, so you don't have to necessarily do any reactions, but this is how you can supply energy. So this is what this jacketed CSTR is going to look like in practice. Um, and another thing I'm going to make note of is that we're going to assume that all the energy from the superheated steam is going into this chemical reactor, but again, in real life, we know that we're going to have some losses. Um, so depending on how much insulation we have, probably not going to be this, so we're giving it kind of like an overestimate. Um, but that's one thing to make note of while you're solving this. Um, and so now we're going to do an energy balance. So the very first thing here is that generic energy balance. So energy balance, apologize for poor handwriting. Um, but basically our energy balance tells us that the change in energy with respect to time of some control volume. So our control volume in this case will be whatever uh, that, that stuff is, our feed is in this particular CSTR. Um, so that's our control volume is equal to whatever heat's coming in, so that's the enthalpy at our inlet, minus whatever enthalpy is leaving our system, and then plus whatever Q we're adding in, minus whatever work is being done by our system. And so this negative sign here uh, should make sense because if my system is doing work, it's losing energy, um, and so that work term would have a positive value, but we're subtracting it out. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And so, you know, as you're solving this, we're going to note how, you know, we're going to assume we're not, our system's not doing any work or it's negligible. Um, we're also going to assume that we're operating at a steady state. Therefore, any term that has that by dt uh, is going to be equal to zero um, because nothing is changing over time. And so now what we're really left with is... Uh, our inlet enthalpy, our outlet enthalpy, and then whatever energy we're adding into our system. And so we can rearrange this, and I'm sorry this is kind of all over the page, but uh, basically we're going to take our energy balance, and what we're going to end up with, just so we're clear here, is we've got zero is equal to H in minus H out plus Q. And so Q is really equal to H out minus H in. And so what is H in and what is H out? So these guys are really equal to the mass flow rate, m dot, times the specific heat capacity of our uh, particular uh, solution or our feed. And then um, I'm going to combine these two terms here, so I'm skipping a step, but we've got the temperature at our outlet minus the temperature at our inlet. And so by doing all this um, and plugging in our numbers, what we ultimately arrive at is a value of 837 kilojoules per minute. And so that is what Q is equal to in this particular process. So I'm just going to circle that. So that is the answer to this guy right here. We did that by just doing a energy balance on our feed inside of our jacketed CSTR. So now that we know how much energy we're going to supply, we can actually do the second part of this problem, which is figure out how much superheated steam we're going to need in this particular process. And so as we're reading through this, uh, we're going to make note how our superheated steam has that inlet's temperature of 500 degrees Celsius and inlet pressure of, five, of 10 bar. And then it's got this outlet temperature of 300 Celsius and outlet pressure of 5 bar 
One thing I want to make note of um, that's really important for just kind of real world applications is to note how your inlet pressure will always need to be higher than your outlet pressure for the steam to even move. So if you said, you know, if this was like 10 bar and 10 bar, it's not going to go anywhere because there's no pressure differential. So it's not really going to do anything. Um, so that's a nice little kind of just nice to know thing as you move through in your career um, is just that, you know, you will need that pressure differential to actually cause any kind of fluid movement, you need a pressure difference uh, between our inlet and an outlet and the inlet needs to be higher. So um, important to note. And so uh, basically we've got, you know, these two conditions, I'm sorry about that. Um, so we've got these two conditions right here. And so um, the key thing for us to take away from this is this 500C 10 bar. And so this first guy, I used green for that. So we'll use green for this was uh, 10 bar right here. Sorry again. 10 bar right here and 500 and so if you just read across this row we're going to see that um, basically this maps to three four seven nine kilojoules per kilogram so that's how much enthalpy our superheated steam at our inlet has and we're going to now use red to look at our outlet conditions so we had 300 degrees celsius and five bar and so this guy had a value of 3,064 kilojoules per kilogram. And so um, that is now telling us how much pre uh, how much energy difference there is between our superheated steam as it entered and left our system. We're also told to assume that all the energy from the superheated steam uh, preheats the feed, uh, goes into that jacketed CSTR, so to speak. And so basically what we're gonna really do here is just subtract these two values and then use that to figure out what, um, how much energy we're actually gonna need. So when you do the subtraction, the number that we end up with is 415 kilojoules per kilogram. Sorry, that's a little messy, but 415 kilojoules per kilogram is how much energy our superheated steam is adding into our system. Um, and so given this condition, and given that we need to be supplying um, 837 kilojoules per minute into our system. This is a fairly simple process uh, at this point. Um, so all you need to do is divide Q by that mass flow rate um, to actually figure this out. So if you have 837 kilojoules per minute that are required, and we know that um, for every, there's 415 kilojoules of energy supplied per one kilogram of superheated steam that goes into our process. We can do the math here, and what we end up finding is that our superheated steam is going to need a mass flow rate of 2.02 .02 kilograms per minute. And so this is the, our answer to our question um, that made use of our steam table. So now we know exactly what the mass flow rate of this particular pipe is right here in our jacketed CSTR. We're getting a mass flow rate of that two kilograms per minute of superheated steam, given the inlet and outlet conditions, as well as our assumption that all that energy actually goes into preheating our feed. So I'm gonna wrap things up with that. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you guys next time.